all the leaders of Israel, the generals and captains of the army, the judges and all the political and clan leaders. Then he led the entire assembly, assembly to the place of worship in Gibeon, for God's tabernacle was located there. This was the tabernacle that Moses, the Lord's servant, had made in the wilderness. David had already moved the ark of God from Kareth Jerob to the tent he had prepared for it in Jerusalem. But the bronze altar made by Mizael, son of Uri, and grandson of Hur, was there at Gibeon in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Solomon and the people gathered in front of it to consult the Lord. There in front of the tabernacle, Solomon went up to the bronze altar in the Lord's presence and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings on it. Verse 7. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said, What do you want? Ask and I will give it to you. Solomon replied to God, You showed great and faithful love to David, my father, and now you have made me king in his place. O Lord God, please continue to keep your promise to David, my father, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me the wisdom. Verse 10. Now get this now. This is biblical model. Give me the wisdom and knowledge to lead them properly. For who could possibly govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, because your greatest desire is to help your people. Right here. Because your greatest desire is to help your people. And you did not ask for wealth, riches, fame, or even the death of your enemies or a long life. But rather you ask for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern my people. I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested. But I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. Then Solomon returned to Jerusalem from the tabernacle at the place of worship in Gibeon. And he reigned over Israel. I feel the Holy Spirit speaking now. He's fixing to release blessing upon people of God that have pure desire. There's nothing wrong with having the wealth of His kingdom. Amen. He's fixing to release it to an authentic pure desire in a people. Father, we love You. We thank You so much for Your Word tonight. Lord, I pray this hour that You begin to move in our hearts and our lives. Lord, I pray that you would begin to work a pure and a hunger and a desire in our heart for your kingdom like never before. Father, lead us this hour. Only your agenda accomplished here tonight. We ask it of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of the message I'd like to share with you tonight is simply this, pure desire. I was before the Lord this week and already had just a wonderful week with the Lord. I already saw the confirming, amazing move of God this week as to why I shared the message I shared Sunday. Amen. So God is confirming what He's doing as He spoke in this place Sunday of the kingdom vessel. Just seeing God move. But in prayer this week, I asked the Lord, I said, what is it, Father, that's keeping us from going to that next level that we know that You're calling us to? Is there anything that needs to be removed? Is there anything that needs to be corrected? Is there anything? Because we know it's not Him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay? okay? So we always go back. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and He said, Desire. Desire. And it was over time in prayer this week that He comes back and He says, Pure desire. Pure desire. I said, Father, show me the biblical model of what you're trying to show me. And he said, go and consider Solomon. Consider Solomon's pure desire. His greatest desire was for the people of God. His greatest desire was for the people that God had called him to govern. Sunday in this place, God confirmed to me, and I don't want to share with you exactly how, but God confirmed to me yesterday that Sunday's message in this place was a governing message. It was a governing message. Because something was coming into the region this weekend that was counterfeit to the authentic message that was preached Sunday. And I was invited to the meeting yesterday. <laughs> And God showed me, he said, this is why. Because, you know, Sunday, 
message was kind of off the beaten path, wasn't it? So we've been talking about things that remain and grace and things that remain and the expectancy of things that remain. And all of a sudden, Sunday, he breaks in here and talks about kingdom vessels and discipleship. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. We should always talk about discipleship and kingdom vessels and, and being used of God in the region. But what did, where is this going along with the season, God? But what God was doing was breaking out in a moment to release a governing message over a region. And afterwards, I was even kind of confronted with, are you going to publish that one? Because you know that's going to ruffle some feathers in the reason. I said, we have to. I said, we can't back down from what God gave us. Amen? Okay. All right. So, keep that in mind. Governing. You see this word governing with Solomon. God releases some things in Solomon's life for what? For the purpose of governing a people. For governing a region. Amen. There is called leadership in this region. And I'm not saying it's only in this house. It's in multiple houses in this region. That God has kept and called and pulled together in this season. To govern this region. Amen. To govern this region. In order for us to ascend to that position. In order for us to rise up to the level that God needs us to be. And to begin to be used of God to govern a region. He's saying tonight that we must, it all hinges on pure desire. Pure desire. Nothing tainted in that desire. Of course we would say our heart is for the people of God. Of course we would say nothing else matters except the harvest. Of course we would say nothing else matters except their healing and their miracles. And whatever God wants to do in the people's lives in the region. But is it totally pure on the back end of it? Is there something that's possibly there that says, well, I could reap of, you know what I mean? Solomon, in the tradition of where he is at, as being placed in position of being a king over a kingdom, the traditional desire would be for his enemies to be erased. For his wealth to increase, right? These would be things that, were, that would be good attributes of a kingdom that would be in place but all of those things are set aside in a moment and says, you have called me to govern a people that are as numerous as the dust of the earth. How can anyone govern such a people? God, I must have your wisdom. Amen. See, it was a pure desire. All right, let's lay some background of how we get to this place. 2 Samuel 1, 11, 1 through 5. And you'll begin to recognize you as a people because God has taught us this before. And he shows us in the biblical model of, of Solomon again. 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 5. In the spring of the year when kings normally go out to war, David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. They destroyed the Ammonite army and laid siege. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Help us tonight. Laid siege to the city of Rabbah. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. In the time... Things are going well for David. Amen. He's got a palace. Everything's going well. Things are in place. Everything's going good. But in the time when spring, when spring comes and kings normally go out to war, he should have been about the kingdom's business. But yet David finds himself blessed of the Lord and finds himself in a complacent state. Complacency has set in and he's going through the motions of a king. And in at the time when he should be about the kingdom's business, he stays back. Late one afternoon after his midday rest, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of the palace. As he looked out over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. He sent someone to find out who she was. He was told she is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her, and when she came to the palace, he slept with her. She, she had just completed the purification rites after her menstrual period. Then she returned home. Later, when Bathsheba discovered that she was pregnant, she sent David a message saying, I'm pregnant. The complacent, this is, this is David's daddy, or excuse me, Solomon's daddy, right? The complacency of a previous generation produces perversion. It will produce adultery. When you get complacent in how God has brought you to a certain place, and we saw that over the history of the church. The church has been blessed. We have the greatest facilities that we've ever had. We've got more money in the bank than we've ever had. All of these things, and the church began to become complacent, and they begin to keep one foot in the church, but then begin to dabble in the world. we got things in the church now that should have never entered the door. 
Why? Because the church got complacent in having their needs met. Instead of being about the kingdom's business and staying offensive, come on, now we're on a defense trying to survive. Come on. Amen. We're trying to survive on defense now. The complacency of a previous generation produced adultery. David had his needs met. Everything was going good with the kingdom. And he wasn't about the father's business. And it caused adultery. It caused perversion. It caused things to enter his kingdom that should have never been. Same thing with the church. You know this, that God, it, God spoke to us years ago in the second location. And He said, your, your grandfather's generation and your parents' generation and your generation. He said, because your parents' generation kept one foot in the world and one foot in the church, it caused you to be born into perversion. It caused you to be birthed into perversion. But He said this, I kept you. Amen. I kept you. Solomon was born into perversion. He was. He, he was not, don't get me wrong. I understand that David took Bathsheba as his wife after he had Uriah killed. And I know that Solomon came after the fact, after the firstborn died. I get it. But the whole relationship and the whole moment of him coming to existence, the foundation of it was adultery and perversion. Amen? Amen. That's what happened. The complacency of a previous generation, the complacency of King David produced adultery and perversion. Then David com comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and slept with her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and David named him Solomon. The Lord loved the child and sent word through Nathan the prophet that they should name him Jedidiah, which means beloved. Man, get what God is speaking over you as a leading, governing generation tonight. Beloved of the Lord. As the Lord had commanded. The complacency of a previous generation produced adultery and perversion. Yet God kept what? There's that word. Yet God kept what? A remnant to move forward in leadership in the next generation. And He has called that remnant beloved. Amen. He has pulled out all the stops. Amen. He, ha he has. It it's just. Listen to me. It's just the purity and the grace of God that you and I sit here right now. As he has shown me in this word tonight that Satan desired to sift us as we. But Jesus Christ himself interceded for his beloved. Amen. Amen. Man, things were surrounding my life that were had entered a pastor's home that it should never have entered a pastor's home. It came after me in the night. It came after me. Come on. It's by the pure grace of God that I stand here in delivering the word of him tonight. Amen. Just by nothing of my own accord, nothing of my own effort, nothing of my own understanding. Listen to me. It's just the pure grace of God. Does anybody understand that tonight? That we're sitting here hearing the word that he's delivering to us this hour. It's the complacency that produces perversion. And we see that in the church that has been before us. I certainly have seen it. 41 years old standing before you today. I've seen it over a generation and I understand. One day that I was in this altar and I said, speak Lord, your servant hears. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you are my beloved son. Amen. I heard it. I heard it. Amen. I heard it with all of my heart. And he calls this kept remnant beloved. Luke 22. And I just mentioned it. Simon, Simon, Satan is asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I. Hallelujah. You've got to understand how he didn't send my God. I feel it tonight. He didn't send an angel after you. He didn't send a prophet after you. He didn't send a pastor after you. He, he himself stepped out and said, no, Satan, you can't have my beloved. You have asked to sift them and throw them down like dust on the ground. But they are my beloved. He said, I pleaded in prayer for you, Simon. That your faith should not fail. And even when you mess up. Hallelujah. Come on. Even when you mess up. So when you have repented. and Even in all those years. Jamie, where you entertained perversion. But yet you repented. And turned to me again. I sent you to strengthen your brothers. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ himself. 
Understand tonight, Christ, that's my God. I wish somebody would understand tonight the understanding of beloved. You are beloved. You are beloved. Christ Himself interceded for you. He didn't send Michael. He didn't, come on, key, come on. Christ Himself interceded for you. you Hallelujah. Now go with me to 1 Kings. Praise the Lord. About that time, David's son, Adonijah. Now get this. We're laying a little bit of foundation of what God wants us to get tonight. You are a remnant that the enemy desired to sift this week. But Jesus interceded for you, for you are his beloved. He kept you as a remnant that was born into perversion, but yet he kept you. He kept you. What else has he done? First Kings 1, 5 through 6. About that time, David's son, Adonijah. I think he's about fourth in line. I think he's about fourth in line. Whose mother was Haggith began boasting. I will make myself king. So he provided himself with chariots and charioteers and recruited 50 men to run in front of him. This is the moment where David, the Bible says that he was so cold enough blankets wouldn't keep him because David was dying. David was on his deathbed and they went, remember they went and brought a young maiden in to comfort him and serve him while he was on death's door. And, and this, at this time, word gets out, the king is dying. And, and this son, who is ahead of Solomon in birthright, he's about fourth down, but you know, one of them's gone missing, two of them are dead. And, and so he's, he's about fourth down, but he's ahead of Solomon. So he just assumes, now I'm going to take the, king, the throne. Amen? So... Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, began boasting, I will make myself king. So he provided himself with chariots and charioteers and recruited 50 men to run in front of him. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him any time, even by asking, why are you doing that? Adonijah had been born next after Absalom, and he was very, very handsome. Very handsome. So look right here. Look with me now. First Kings 1 17 through 18, 23 through 30. What do we know to be true? So Adonijah at the time of King David's death, all right, he's trying to usurp the throne. Usurp is simply illegally trying to take authority in a place that you don't have the right to. Okay? That's going on in our region right now, but God's about to sweep that stuff out. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. So Adonijah is trying to take the throne, which he is ahead of Solomon in birthright. So traditionally, that's the way we would go, right? Traditionally. Get that now. Huh. She replied, but what we know to be true. 1 Kings 1, 17 through 18, 23 through 30. She replied, my Lord. Bathsheba speaking to the king. My Lord, you made a vow before the Lord your God when you said to me, your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit on my throne. But instead, Adonijah has made himself king and my Lord, the king, does not even know about it. Then steps in the prophet, verse 23. Nathan went in and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Nathan asked my Lord, the king, have you decided that Adonijah will be the next king and that he will sit on your throne? Today he has sacrificed many cattle, fat and calves, and sheep, and he has invited all the king's sons to attend the celebration. He also invited the commanders of the army, and Abiathar the priest, they are feasting and drinking with him and shouting, Long live King Adonijah. But he did not invite me or Zadok the priest or Benaiah or your servant Solomon. Has my lord the king really done this without letting any of his officials know who should be the next king? King David responded, Call Bathsheba. So she came back in and stood before the king, and the king repeated his vow, As surely as the Lord lives, who has rescued me from every danger, your son Solomon will be the next king and will sit on my throne this very day, just as I vowed to you before the Lord, the God of Israel. Now see yourself in biblical model as a remnant that has been kept. Not only are you a remnant, we've talked about this in many seasons before, not only are you a remnant that has been kept from perversion and adultery that you were birthed into, you have been kept because Christ directly interceded from you, but not only have you been kept from perversion, but you are one that has been launched beyond tradition. Think about it now. God didn't leave you to just go through the motions of, uh, of what's going on in East Tennessee in the traditions of men. Come on, the traditions of men make God's word of no effect. Amen? Come on. 
And God did not leave you there to go through the motions of what's been going on the last 40 or 50 years as men has touched the glory of God and have tried to take control of His church. Listen to me. God didn't leave you there, nor did He leave Solomon there. Do you see the biblical model of how He keeps a remnant through perversion? How He launches remnant beyond tradition? Amen. Think about it. Not only a remnant kept from perversion, but one launched beyond tradition. That is Solomon's life. What is the destiny of Solomon's life? To govern a people. To govern a people. Amen? Not just to have a story of how wise he is or how wealthy he was or the majesty of a kingdom of what we read about and what we understand about of the nation of Israel in that moment of time in history. No, he was called to govern a people. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So look, what does he do in 2 Chronicles? He has been called to govern a people to ascend to the leading position. This is what we've got to get to. And this is where we need to let the Holy Spirit do a real work in our hearts and our lives. To make sure. And I sent this word to a brother in Atlanta this afternoon. This man said, are we going to church? I said, I've got to get this word to my brother. God has just placed him in Atlanta to an, ascend to, to an ascending position that's before him to govern. <coughs> I said, brother, now everything in the world is going to come at your flesh to entice your flesh to convince you that there are other things that you need in order to govern a people. I said, the only thing you need is a pure desire of his kingdom. I'm telling you, when you come through a breakthrough season and you come into a place called freedom through a, through a, through a wilderness and through breakthrough, listen to me, things will come... Things will come at you to entice you and say, well, you're through with that. Now you can now you can enjoy this. Now you can entertain this. Now you can have this. Uh -uh. You better be careful and you better watch what it is because it's a you've got another level to get to. You've got a governing position that God has called you to. Come on. Let me look at it this way. We come on. We might think that we need a facility in order to begin starting a school. That may very well be true. And we may be enticed. Come on. We may be enticed to run after that. But the number one thing that we need to keep our eyes fixed on. Is a pure desire for the way of escape. For the children to get out. God will take care of the rest. Amen. Does this make sense? He said, things will come at you now. And because you're coming into breakthrough, we have, I didn't even announce that we're starting a building fund. We have more money in a building fund than we would, come on, right now. Didn't even announce it. God's taking care of that. Don't worry about it. Amen? Amen. Keep your eyes fixed on the pure desire of why he's doing what he's doing. The pure desire is this. He said, it's fixing to get so bad in the schools that I'm going to use you as a way of escape for children to get out. That's the pure kingdom desire. Amen. He said this in a night of prayer in this place. He said, when it becomes much more than they can bear, I will give them a way of escape. Amen. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. That we don't we don't get. Listen to me, and and I I I, I faltered and I failed. And that's why he's speaking to me about pure desire. He's saying, yes, you're in a place now where you can begin to walk toward things. But he said, listen to me. I got all that. I've got it. Keep your eyes fixed on the pure desire that I placed within you, and let nothing taint it. Amen. And let nothing taint it. It's a pure desire for the people. Amen. For the people of God. That's what happens with Solomon here. He's been kept from, from perversion. Do you agree? He's been launched. Come on. The first baby died. Amen. David and Bathsheba. The, the announcement of the first baby died. Solomon was kept. Solomon was kept. He was kept. He was launched beyond tradition when Adonijah tried to usurp his daddy's throne, which would have been more traditional in the succession of a throne than Solomon having. 
But Solomon was kept from perversion and launched beyond tradition for what? To ascend to the leading position to govern a people. And this is what God wants us to see tonight. Come on. He said, Oh Lord God, please continue to keep your promise to David, my father. If you've made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth, give me the wisdom. Give me the wisdom and knowledge to lead them properly. Not a facility, not wealth, not fame, not riches, not this, not, come on. Amen. Give me the wit. God's got all that. We'll, you see it right here. Give me the wisdom and knowledge to lead them properly for who could possibly govern this great people of yours? Who could possibly govern a region from having to more stuff? Come on. This, is, this isn't just a good story. This is biblical model. God said to Solomon, because your greatest desire is to help your people and you did not ask for wealth, riches, favor, even the death of your enemies or your long life. What is that little thing? It, and listen, this is not a thing. This is just get before the Lord and let him do a, to do a good work in your heart's desire and make it pure. Amen. Is there anything little there that's tainting or, 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 or really kind of kind of coming against you launching into that ascending position? That leading governing position. To ascend to the leading position. What's, what's, what's the hinge point of God releasing you? What is the hinge point of God releasing you to the next, to, to the ascending position, the leadership position, the governing position? What is it? It's pure desire. Pure desire. Kingdom desire. Pure desire. Not anything of this world, not anything of your flesh, but pure kingdom desire. Why does he call it an ascending position? Now I know why. Because he took me in the study over here. The Lord, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Who may ascend? Who may climb? Amen. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure. That's the word tonight. Why did God ultimately ascend Him to the positioning of governing a people and seeing the blessing and the mighty move of God in the kingdom like they had never known before. It all hinged on a heart that was pure. Pure. There was, listen to me, there was no other agenda. No other agenda. Not any kind of positioning for himself. Not what can this do for me or how this can help me or how this can bless me. No! Your greatest desire was for the people that He called you to. Hmm. Help us now. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in this holy place? Only those <coughs> excuse me, whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They, come on. That's why I talked about idols not too long ago. They will receive the Lord's blessing. Amen. Listen to me. I ain't talking about you just got to have pure desire and walk around in a ragtag. And man, Solomon was blessed beyond anything anybody had ever known. I ain't throwing the blessing of God out. Hallelujah. Let him bring whatever I need for his glory. I ain't throwing the blessing of God out. Don't think we got to walk down, cowered over, and, and don't have. Come on. I've never seen him begging. Come on. Let's go. Amen. Come on. Who may cry? They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. What happens? What is the result? The pure desire. What will happen? This is, this is, what, this is what brings the blessing. Because <laughs> he can't help but bring blessing when he walks in. <laughs> That's what he is. Amen. That's who he is. Open up ancient gates. 
Open up ancient doors and let the King of Glory enter. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates. Open up ancient doors and let the King of Glory enter. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of Heaven's armies. He is the King of Glory. Who may climb? Who may stand in His holy place? Pure hands, pure hearts. The pure desire will open for the King of glory and all His fullness to enter. Amen. His wisdom, His knowledge, His wealth. Come on. Amen. Come on. This is just the truth. <laughs> Look right here. We've got to get this stuff real quick when we get out of here. Second Chronicles 1, 7 through 13. God, because your greatest desire is to help your people and you do not ask for these things. The thing Solomon did not ask for, what? The thing Solomon did not ask for were the traditional things of a kingdom. Listen to me now. We can't get hung up on the things that we think we need next. Because if we do, we're going to circle the mountain right back from where we came from. Because that's what's wrong with the generation before us. Look right here. The things Solomon did not ask for were the traditional things of a kingdom. The wealth, the fame, the, the, the defeating of enemies, all that stuff. They were the traditional things of a kingdom, which are the very things that cause what? Complacency, which we know what? Produce the perverse. Back around the circle. It's okay to have the blessing of God in those things. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessing, wealth, fame, whatever God wants to give us. It's okay to have the blessing of God in those things as long as the desire is pure and remains pure. Amen. That's what we've got to get. God, God doesn't expect us to walk over and just pour and this that. Like, listen to me. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a. I'm not a prosperity gospel preacher. I'm just not that. God ain't put that in my heart. Whatever. I'm, I'm not here to talk about that tonight. But listen to me. You don't have to walk around in nothing. God has a blessing for you and He has all kind of things that He wants to do in the fullness of your life as He walks in, open up ancient doors, open up ancient gates. He has the fullness of everything for you. He'll do it in pure desire. For what? For His kingdom alone. Amen. Because your greatest desire is to help your people. Because your greatest desire is to help your people. Not a facility to put the school in, but a greatest desire to, to, to get before God and seek His face that He may be the way of escape when they need to get out. The pure desire. This makes sense. Consider Jesus. He walked away about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you're willing, please take this cup of suffering from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Even to the point that His... Sweat is becoming as drops of blood. Right? Even under the great weight and suffering of carrying the, the sin of all of humanity, Jesus says, my desire remains pure. Not my will, but yours. Consider Jesus. He walked this before our lives. Solomon walked this before our lives. Second Chronicles, look back. God's breakthrough for our lives is not for us to now pursue things that will present themselves to our flesh. Get that now. Many of us are coming through this call, coming through breakthrough over the last year. It's not for us now to pursue things that will present themselves to, to, present themselves to our flesh. He will give us all that we need, even beyond our imagination, even unto our heart's desire. Get that now. You don't have to talk about your heart's desire. He will give that even unto your heart's desire. Yet it all begins with a pure desire for His kingdom alone. Because your greatest desire is to help your people. Amen? Because your greatest desire is to help your people. What does He say? Stand with me. I'm over this place. Psalm 51, 10. Created me a clean heart, O God. And what? Renew a right? Renew a loyal spirit within me. Loyal to what? The pure desire that He placed in you as He kept you from perversion and launched you beyond tradition. 
Lord, let that pure kingdom desire remain in me. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. The only reason you're here right now is He kept you. He launched you beyond tradition. He kept you from perversion. He interceded for you. Him alone. Amen. And He placed a pure desire in all of us. And now you know what's standing before this call and you as a people. It's an ascending position. It's an ascending position. It's an upward position. For what? The purpose of governing a region. Amen. You can believe it or not. I'm going to preach you. I told Samantha on the way here. I said I'm going to teach and I'm going to preach what God gives me. And you can choose to believe it or not. <laughs> You say, how in the world this few on a Wednesday night will rise to a position of governing a region? Have you met my God? <laughs> the ascending position is before you. Many things will come to entice the flesh to taint the pure desire that's within you. Discard it and say, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal spirit to the pure desire that you've placed in me. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, this is a major word for this people tonight. Lord, it's not coincidence of who is here tonight. Father, you're speaking to a people that the ascending position is before them now. Lord, they have come through breakthrough. They have come to a place of freedom to where they can climb the mountain. You did it, Father. You have done it for us all. It's by your grace that we stand at the foot of the mountain. It's by your power that we stand now at the foot of the mountain. You say, now who may climb? Who may climb? Those with pure hearts and clean hands. Pure hands and pure hearts. Father, my prayer this week in my life has been create a desire in me like I've never known. Father, I mean it. Create a pure desire in me beyond and deeper rooted. All oh, renew a loyal spirit in me, Father. Beyond anything I've ever known. Lord, I pray that you would do it not for me. My God, do it for your people. Yes. Lord, do it for your people all over this region. Not just in this house tonight. Not just among this family and this call tonight. Father, do it in the houses of remnant all over this region now. Father, let them understand that it's a pure desire. And your kingdom alone. That is the hinge. That is the turning. That is the doorway of climbing the mountain this hour. Father, I pray that you would renew our hearts and minds. Father, do a work. Father, do a strong desire work in our lives right now. Come on. Come on, people of God. Just reach out before your Father right now. Say, Father, Father, oh, create in me a clean heart. Let nothing taint the pure desire that you put in me. Let nothing taint the pure desire that you put in me. Father, renew a loyal spirit in me to remain, Father, in your kingdom purpose, your kingdom desire. Father, we pray tonight before your throne, give us what we need from what you desire in governing the people of the region. Give us what we need from what you desire. Father, let your desire, Lord, burn in us for this region. Let your kingdom desire burn in us. Father, what we need for what you want, that's it. That's all we want. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this season. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace and your love. Lead us from this place this night. Walking in every, 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 every ordained step. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father, for your teaching tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, do a work in our lives beyond our imagination this hour. 
your provision, protection, and favor upon your people as they launch from this place this moment. We ask it in Jesus' name. Lord, let us not miss a kingdom moment this hour. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you as our prayer. This is a midweek conversation. Pure desire. Pure desire. Stay before the Lord in that. God bless you.